He's boldly gone where no one has gone before. He's battled alongside Amazonian women, and now Chris Pine faces his biggest challenge yet, pleasing the D&D community. We talk about the upcoming movie, Dungeons & Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. And speaking of pleasing the community, Wizards of the Coast has announced they will be leaving the OGL license as it was, and have apologised for losing so much money, proving that if you want something changed, you do it with your wallet. So now, we can go back to worrying about more pressing matters, like how many sets of dice am I buying this week? And finally, min-maxing. Is it a bad thing, and can I use, uh, can I justify my super soldier monk? All this and more as me and my fellow players and DMs sit around the table and roll with the discussion. Welcome everybody, my name is Crafty Ginger and this is Roll for Discussion. Joining me and uh, tonight's session, we have Sarone. Hello. I'm just a casual d and player, so I might not know much, but I love taking part in games. And so far, I haven't done any DMing, but I am interested. Uh, we have Chadstick. Hey, I am a professional GM. Yes, I get paid to do it, not as much as I'd like. And it's not my only source of income, but I enjoy it enough to do it uh, as a job. And I look forward to the day I get to play in campaigns. And finally, we have J. Sam Pizza Man. And I am not a paid GM. I do this out of the goodness of my heart, unlike Chad Stick. <laughs> <Fair>. <laughs> And if anyone would like to check out any of their YouTube channels, their links will be below in the description box. I now, wrestled a panda. He did indeed. It's actually quite a good. It's quite a good video. <laughs> <laughs> I actually ended up in the hospital from that storyline, but that's a story for another time. <laughs> well, speaking of stories, uh, we're going to get on with our first segment, which is this week as a geek. So. Starting off uh, with Chadstick, uh, you got any stories for us, mate, of uh, anything you've done as a geek this week? Yeah, I have uh, of two things, actually. One, I've got involved in a Warhammer 40,000 uh, crusade, which is kind of like a campaign you do with your army. Um, and having seen the other lists that are involved in it, I'm uh, looking forward to coming somewhere near the bottom. Um, but I'm excited about that because uh, it's kind of a campaign. Uh, and I love playing war games. The other thing is, I've written um, 3,000 words for my, my newest book. Um, I'm not sure how much that qualifies as being a geek, but it's about pretty geeky stuff, so I'm excited for that. I would say, definitely say that qualifies. Uh, uh, are you able to share any of that, or are you going to keep it close to your chest for now? Uh, well, uh, it's, it's uh, the third book in my fantasy series that I've started. Um... I think, have you read both of them, Crafty? Uh, I believe I've read the first one. I don't think I ever I have managed to get around to the second one yet. It is on my list. I've just not. I've never been very good at going through a lot of books. Uh, that is on me. But if anyone was interested in looking into your books, where could they find them? Oh, they could uh, find them on Amazon. Actually, uh, thanks for asking. Um, yeah, they're both available. In fact, there is a third one, a standalone kind of sci-fi superhero satire that's on there as well um just look for my name john chaddock man of shadows or thunder and lightning and that'll get you to the the two starters um but this the one i'm working on is the third in the fantasy series and it's it's fun it's fun to write it again fantastic absolutely brilliant um and just so in case anyone out there is not sure on how to spell the surname if you could just give us the spelling for him uh C H A double D O C K. It's like Haddock with a C. Perfect. There you are, everybody. If you're interested in some fantasy books, please go and check it out. Uh, it's John Chaddock, C H A double D O C K. Uh, I, like I said, I had definitely read the first one. Absolutely loved it. I did leave a review, and I do recommend uh, if you want to give something uh, new a try, you go and check those out. I did actually name a character in the second book after you uh, because you left a review within a certain time period. Oh. Um, so, yeah. All right, now, now, no, no. now, 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 I feel obligated. I must go and give this the second one a read. I gotta find out which one is it. It's, ah, it's the one who died in the first chapter. Fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think you think you might survive the prologue, don't? <laughs> yeah. um, thank you very much for that, bud. Uh, Jason, what about yourself? Well, I have an ongoing D and D campaign. Uh, we played last night and uh, almost had a death. Uh, so I'll explain what happened. So they were in this forest, and one of my characters or players is little murder hobo ish. Um, and they came across this giant tree with some houses in it. And uh, so his character, he's playing a fairy, uh, flew up, knocked on one of the doors, pretended to sell them cookies, and proceeded to cut their wings off because uh, they were pixies. <laughs> um, as he did so, uh, another pixie in another house. Uh, polymorphed him into a goat. The goat plummeted 30 feet and splatted on the ground. Wow. Well, there's that... a message in there somewhere. <laughs> <isn't> there? <laughs> <Yes. laughs> oh my goodness. Surprise... Surprisingly, he didn't die. I thought he died, but then I looked deeper into him like, okay, he's still alive. <laughs> how, how deep did you look into him? I was going to say, it must have been pretty messy. <laughs> <into> that, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> it's alright guys, I've got a pulse. It might only be in his heart and three limbs, but you know, it's <laughs> if you don't limbs. Have a your heart, you're okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doctor by any means. <laughs> or that in this case. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, thank you very much for that uh, horrific imagery, Jason. That was uh, that was really good. <laughs> And um, just so you all know, folks, Jason is actually very PG when it comes to his channel. So his channel's great if you want to send your kids that way. Uh, do so. He's got some really good adventures out there. A lot of Minecraft stuff. Uh, he even did... Uh, there is work, work of a D&D &D one-shot, I believe, with uh, myself and another one, uh, David Corder. Uh, not sure when that's coming out yet. Won't hold to that one just yet, Jason. But uh, it'll see. If you guys are looking for... Um, family friendly content definitely go check that out J Sand Pizza Man at YouTube oh thank you Crafty that's alright bud um, Sarone I understand you got no uh, you got no stories for Geek of the Week uh, this week however uh, we do know that obviously you also have a YouTube channel so uh, what is the what is the name of your channel sir um my name <laughs> Sarone well there you go that's nice and easy that is C-I-R-O-N there you go. <laughs> and what type of uh, what type of content have you got on there? Uh, just some casual playthroughs of some games, or just funny moments from some games. Perfect. Well, there you go, folks. If, if you're interested in that sort of thing, go check out his channel. Uh, right. Uh, on to myself for this week as a geek. So I uh, did a little bit of uh, DM into my own campaign. Uh, the first arc uh, of that campaign has now come to an end. Um. But I won't go into much more of it because I do the same campaign for uh, my American friends, one of which is Jason Pizza Man, so I won't go into what happens. Uh, but I will say, uh, on a different related bit for, for Geekery, starting on Monday, I will be doing a live stream Monday to Thursday, and I'll do it every other week as I'm on a late shift with my job. And I'll be doing a Nuzlocke challenge for Pokemon Fire Red. So any Americans out there that are interested in coming to watch, It'll be 11:30 uh, p.m. GMT, which will be, I believe, Jason. That's what 6:30 p.m. on your time. It's five hours behind, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Like that. So 6:30 p.m. EST for anyone in America who wants to listen, and anyone in uh, the UK that's actually staying up particularly late, you want to come and give it a watch. If you're not interested in seeing the live stream, I will be looking at making some edited versions of that, t uh, cutting it down just for some of the highlight moments plan on doing it for as long as i can last so probably by thursday that'll be the end of the series uh, as i'll probably have died by the second gym but who knows it could be entertaining nonetheless so if anyone's interested stop by the channel on monday and come check it out and that was uh, uh, this week as a geek and now on to our first topic wizards of the coast uh, they had well uh, D, D beyond they have now uh, issued a new uh where is it that's it they've issued a statement uh in this statement uh, it's from D, D beyond and it, it says over the past few weeks you the community have made your voices heard and we've listened 
OGL 1.0A will remain untouched and the entire SRD 5.1 is now available under a Creative Commons license. Uh, and then obviously they've uh, put this out in a, a nice little imagery here. Uh, at the end of it it says, you choose which you prefer to use. Now, a lot of people are looking at this as a big victory. And yes, it, I, I would say this does come across as quite a bit of victory because of the amount of money that Wizards of the Coast have lost lately. Uh, the competition that have been rising, uh, I believe Pathfinder, they sold something like two months worth of stock in about a week. I think it was, as uh, people were going over there. Uh, the numbers that they were losing on D&D Beyond from subscriptions. All this uh, seemed to have come to a head and they finally seem to have given up. Now, one thing I will point out is they say a Creative Commons license. That that There is not a single Creative Commons license. There are several different versions. So I, I'm not sure which one exactly they're going for. Um, I had someone who said that uh, did a little bit of research for me. And they think they've picked the one that is the most free, as it were. And I believe the the, the, the what you have to do is that you still have to credit D and D for it. So you you still have to say that this is uh, you know this has come from D and D or like this is owned by D and D. Uh, you could still apparently um, make money and everything off it, but then it's entirely down to you whether you want to go down that route or if you want to stick with the one point zero eight. But yep, that's the that's the main bit that I've got in it, uh, guys. Any of you got any thoughts on it? Now, I know Chad, uh, you unfortunately you missed out when we had this last uh, discussion before. You got to put a post in. Um, we managed to read up, and a few of us, you know, bounce back uh, some thoughts and stuff. Um, I mean, it was great it was doing the post, but I kind of wish that we could have been at least because uh, I didn't like the idea. You know, we're we're throwing these arguments back, but then you're not there to be able to you know counter what we're saying. So it just it felt like it was a bit of a pile up at one point. So if you've got any anything you want to throw back about what was said last week, obviously the rest of the guys aren't here, so I'll try to I'll try to see what I can say back of that. Or if you just got any new uh, thoughts or opinions on this, uh, guys, have at it. Well, I mean, I I wasn't actually trying to defend wizards. Uh, as I said, I was mainly mm. bringing up those points so that they could be... It's like devil's advocate, so if anything. Witnessed, you know? Mm. Um, because there were counter-arguments that other people will have made that would have pointed out, and it just meant that when you guys were discussing it, mm -hmm. it showed that they had been considered in your discussions, because it's not always clear. Um, that said, I am, of course, a corporate shill for wizards, so <laughs> this is a massive, <laughs> massive failure for the corporate overlord. <laughs> And, uh, frankly, um, I, I could barely bring myself to appear on this channel again after uh, your statements. No, um, <laughs> no, I, I think it's good. It's obviously a victory for the people. Uh, I'm not entirely in agreement with the concept that all creativity should be unbound by, uh, by restitution so i think it's it's fair that you credit wizards of the coast or dungeons and dragons in the new stuff and say hey i and it, it's just all it is is lip service mm. in, as far as i understand it um in this new um free posting license thing you were talking about you just pay lip service to it and then move on um i think that's fine and you can still make money from it without getting an additional tax from wizards which is great because that means i am actually continuing to refine my current campaign that i've written up so it can be released as a standalone module um because i would have been able to well i would have been able to do it but i would have obviously been at the uh <laughs> suffered under the new open gaming license mm. 1.1 um before so i did i did stop doing it then but with this news, I've I've done a very small amount of editing um, for it and continued that on. I think it's good. It's clearly a victory for the people. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't know what else that can be said. Like... No, I was just to say. I mean, it's, it's, we weren't going to go too much into this because you know, obviously, it seems like everything's kind of sort of wrapped up. Uh, quite nicely um i will say as much as it is a victory uh for the community i do think that people should always always try to remember you know they want to forgive fine but don't ever forget because you never know what you know 10 years down the line they might try something like this again 
you know. Yeah, because you I mean you remember the uh, was it the Magic the Gathering fiasco that happened not too long ago? Well, well exactly. I, I think that's yeah. what ended up leading to then them going after D and D because they just so sort of screwed up the Magic the Gathering so much. I, yeah. I, I can't believe like the that fact I want to talk because I play Magic the Gathering as mm. well as I'm sure like some of you might. Um, the when the amount of because I have a, a friend who was outraged by that and they said, "Oh, it's they're selling it for nine hundred ninety nine dollars." I said, "Don't buy it." <laughs> like uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, like they're not making you. It's not a tax. It's not. It was far more innocuous than the whole. Dungeons and Dragons thing. You just had to not buy it and continue with your life as normal. And then he came back with, yeah, but other people will have those cards and it'll be unfair. I was like... But you can't even I'd... play with them. Yeah, exactly. They I'm... weren't legal in a tournament format as I far know. as I understood. I'm, I'm the one who plays with like 30 pound EDH decks <laughs> unsleeved, which is a sin in the community. But like, I, I play Magic as cheaply as possible. Because and, I, and the only reason I don't print off my own cards is because certain members of my play group would be very against the idea of proxies, which I find ridiculous. Um, but yeah, the whole whole collector's edition fiasco—I couldn't believe how many people were upset about it. <laughs> well, I think it was a pointless waste of emotion. I think I think so. I mean, I'm not I'm not as into Magic the Gathering as, as uh, some of you guys. Uh, I mean, I used to, I obviously used to play it for a few years, but I, I never got. I don't think I ever got as invested into it. But I can. I think I sort of understand where some of the frustration could have come from, considering it was wasn't it supposed to be like the thirtieth year anniversary, so it was supposed to be like a big, you know, a big deal. And all that came out of it was here's a bunch of cards that cost a ridiculous amount. You can't guarantee you're going to get the ones that you that you want, and you can't actually use them in any kind of a like. A, any like proper tournament sort of thing so it was just sort of uh, uh go fuck yourself community we don't really give a shit about whether whether you whether you like this or not you know yeah i, th I, I think that's where some of it comes from i mean i could be wrong there could be other things involved but i think like if you know you got if D, &D did had this big special event going on to celebrate and yeah again they just they came out with just a load of rubbish and they were overcharging for it it just sort of like it's like how much do they really actually care about their product that they're trying to sell to people yeah yeah i, I want to point out that buying a pack of magic cards and not really knowing whether or not you're going to get them is the entire premise of the game <laughs> yeah but when it's only no, costing you a, when it's only it. going to cost you you know a couple of dollars or a couple of pounds or something that's that's one thing but when it's like you're looking at nearly a thousand it's yeah, 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 no, no. <laughs> like it's just souped up to 11 and as far as i remember the 20 year anniversary stuff was underwhelming as well like that's not where the fun of magic comes from there's not yeah a there point. isn't really a, a global community of players there's a lot of little play groups mm you know that work together on it and they all have their own metas and that's wonderful it's great but because it's so tribalistic it's not it's it's not you know i know there are like well uh, leagues and world tournaments etc but it's not i don't know it's, it's not as community driven at that that high level mm. like and it's i think <laughs> expecting creators of a game that you're paying for anyway to to make something special for it is is unrealistic i think in the modern economic world no fair enough this is not me defending that by the way i'm fully for tearing the capitalist <laughs> this is this is only proving my point we need to overthrow those corporate overlords but i i think you know when it comes out and it's a bit meh like I laughed at the the, the the 30 year anniversary thing because ah, I'm just not getting involved in that mm. not man I deserve more because like what, what kind of entitlement is that man <laughs> <laughs> it's a fair shout a fair shout but um uh, just quickly going back to the uh, situation with the with the new change oh, in yeah, the license sorry, sorry. that's alright it's, it's all good um, Saron any thoughts on this or are you, you happy just to sit back and let the rest of us uh, hash it out right now Ah, I'm going to stay in my chair and listen. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> well then, I think we've I think we've covered over OGL uh, the whole situation. I think we can go back to worrying about other things, um, such as the new D and D movie that is uh, scheduled to release 
Uh, I believe it's March. Uh, I could be wrong. I just... it's... Is it March? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yes, 31st of March 2023, and it is starring the following Chris Pine, Michelle Rodriguez, Reggae Jean Page. And we've had a bit of discussion about whether that was the right pronunciation. So if it's not, I do apologize. If it's Reggae or Reggie, or Reggie, I do, or Reggie, I don't know. But never mind. Justice Smith, Sophia Lillis, Hugh Grant, Chloe Coleman, Jason Wong. Daisy Head, Sophia Eleni, and I probably got that wrong as well, and Brian Larkin. Uh, so, guys, what do we think of this? I mean, there, there's been a couple of trailers out for it so far. You know, um, I think I've got the kind of gist. Uh, it seems that there was a couple of uh, couple of players. You had a, there's a bard, which is Chris Pine's character. Michelle Rodriguez played a barbarian. I believe they they've got a group together and they've stolen something for somebody but it turns out to be some sort of like ultra powerful uh, item and now they I think they've got another group together where they're going to try to get the item back or something along those lines so as uh, yeah. what does everyone think of it I think it looks good but and again to kind of bring back the elephant in the room here will it do good because it's we know Wizards of the Coast. That's the other question. <laughs> After um, yeah, what's happened recently? Are people gonna? There, there was a whole thing about boycotting the movie and stuff. Uh, I mean, the movie's already been made at this point. I mean, if if you were interested in going to see the movie, you'd still gonna want to see the movie. Like and again, regular people who aren't in, I said regular people, like, you know, normies who wouldn't be into D&D maybe in general, but might still want to go and see um, a fantasy movie because, you know, like superhero, well, you think about it, superhero genre is just, is, is so played out at the moment. People, that people want whoa, to see something whoa, whoa, else. Whoa, whoa, Crafty, are you saying that Marvel might be creatively bankrupt now that they've already <laughs> wasted the thin material they decided to adapt from their rich comic book history? If it gets me cancelled, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a fantasy comedy movie, so mm. it's it's a type of movie that doesn't like come out often. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Um so I say, speaking of like fantasy movies, uh, I still haven't seen the what well, the Dungeons and Dragons inspired movie that had Tom Hanks. Uh, oh no, I haven't seen that either. I thought you were going to mention the uh, heroic and legendary release of the original Dungeons and Dragons film, or what I thought was obviously the Tom Hanks one predates this, but the one from two thousand. Is that the one with Marlon Wayans? Uh, I think it is. Oh my god, and that's um. <laughs> um, oh, what's his name? Oh, God, the the bald fella. Uh, he he's really good at like he announces his words like he's. It's got it's Jeremy in Irons in. That's what you're trying to hit on. It does star Jeremy Irons as the villain. Yeah, had Jeremy Irons, yeah. but I'm sure didn't have John Malkovich as well. Or no, I think no, I'm... you're Aragon. Oh, yeah, thinking, uh, oh right. well, that shows you. That shows you how well I remembered that movie. The <laughs> <laughs> Considering the movie left on a cliffhanger and they never made another. One. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be something if Jeremy Irons makes an appearance in this? <laughs> well, I want to be honest. Jeremy Irons appearing in the original was what gave it any kind of weight at all. Um, <laughs> but not only that, the uh, it did actually spawn a sequel. Um, Wait, what? Called. Yeah, uh, made for TV sequel, Wrath of the Dragon God. And if that doesn't strike you as a, a waste of investment after the 2000 film, because I'll be honest, it wasn't the greatest film in the world, um, it spawned a third film because it was designed as a trilogy. And someone had to fulfill the contra contra uh, contractual obligations. Contractual and that was called, yeah, the. The Book of Vile Darkness in 2011 and released direct to DVD only in the United Kingdom, apparently. <laughs> okay. And, I've, yes, I've... I did look this up when you started mentioning uh, the, the film. <laughs> this was the research I said I'd done. Research, so. <laughs> well, I think at some I don't point. I about then... those other two, f two sequels. I am going to go away and watch them. Maybe we could do a um, kind of a mystery science theatre episode where we watch those films. I was I was going to say we should have an evening where we we get a bunch of us together and we go through all these Dungeons and Dragons inspired ones. We start with the Tom Hanks one. Because I, I hear it's, like, hysterically bad. And it's just... I, I, I cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a 
drunk, except except me, because I don't drink. I'll drink like cough syrup or something, just to make <laughs> it a little even better. I would drink water. Um, I will happily. I've got a bottle of rum with the with an undisclosed date on it, so I I need to, need to assign it to something, and I will gladly get drunk and watch terrible Dungeons and Dragons films. Oh, then, then fact, it has been agreed. <laughs> I have a perfect drinking game for it as well. If anyone else is drinking, otherwise I'll just go on. Let's see it. Make myself drink. Let's see what, what. Oh, so I um, it's based off the Lord of the Rings drinking game that I introduced to my friendship group some time ago. Um, oh my god, I remember this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, each of you in the Fellowship drinking game randomly draws a member of the Fellowship. Whenever they appear in a scene, not on screen, but in a scene, you have to take a drink. Additionally, whenever Gandalf appears in a screen, everybody has to stand up, raise their glasses, and say, Gandalf! Uh, the last person to do so has to take two drinks. Historically, this is nearly always Gandalf because he's busy drinking for having appeared in the scene. <laughs> um, if you're, when your character dies, you have to finish your drink and everybody else has to waterfall while they try to finish, uh, out of respect. And uh, we all know that's Boromir, who then comes back as Faramir. So you can continue on. Or Theoden, depending on your interpretation of it. And you basically watch all three uh, Lord of the Rings films back to back in one sitting doing that. Um, it's terrible. Uh, <laughs> First one to go to uh, A and E loses. Yeah, it's, it's it's quite. I've only done it all the way through once, um, but it's it gets quite quite, quite merry uh, and a little pippin. <laughs> like, um, like I said, since I don't drink, can I switch out drinking for getting tased? Yeah, if you want, if you want to get tased. Oh my so goodness! I, I got tased as a kid, bro. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, so the way I've adapted it is when you, I did it for a bad film night, uh, like series of social events that I ran, um, and basically you turn up with some drink. You, we watch some terrible films, um, mostly made by uh, studios like The Asylum, who do rip off some famous blockbusters. Oh uh, yes. Um, uh, so the big ones from them, Transmorphers and Snakes on a Train. Um, they really, they the Asylum classically release films with a similar name of a blockbuster that's coming out. So people accidentally buy their films instead of the right one. Uh, um, did you? Uh, I think they did one. It was uh, it was like Gorilla versus Monster or something. I like haven't that. seen Gorilla versus Monster, but I did. I have reputedly watched um, something versus Sharktopus. Oh yeah, that's right. Because I saw Sharktopus. I didn't. What, was it whale? Was it whale? Whale, sh uh, whale shark versus Sharktopus, I think. And no, the joke whale there wolf. is it was whale, whale wolf. wolf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The joke is whale wolf and Sharktopus are their own individual franchise. So then they made a versus film out of this, their own franchise. I, fucking, I love it. Um, but yeah, the drinking game basically means when you watch one of these films, you pick a character and whenever they appear in a scene, you take a drink. Um, and if you die, you have to finish your drink and pick a new character. And it's all the more fun when you watch films that you don't know what's going to happen in when they're rubbish and loosely based on horror, because someone is probably going to die. We, uh, I would just like to point out to anybody listening right now that we um, also advise that you drink responsibly, and only if you're a, uh, of an adult age and can handle your alcohol do you attempt to do something like this with uh, friends. Just point that's that out not, there before. That wasn't, that wasn't said beforehand, so it can't be made as a... Just, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been Roll for Discussion. It's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you all so very much. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's basically what I'll be doing with the D&D &D, um, sequels. The straight to DVD oh yeah, that's sequels. right. This is a D&D &D podcast. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, it's not, not. True, it's true. not a drinking one. No. What? It is not a drinking podcast, no. Hey, well, back to the film. I am very <laughs> excited for it because the plot sounds like it was slightly more thought through than let's do a D&D &D film. Um, from my understanding, from the trailer, so not real spoilers, but I'll put a warn warning on it anyway. Um, shouldn't have done that because I could have got Crafty cancelled over spoilers, <laughs> but never mind. Um, so the plot from the trailer is that the, it focuses on like a group of thieves who were paid very handsomely to steal a thing by the big bad guy and then he starts or they start causing the end of the world and the thieves are like damn well we sold it once so we can do it again so they kind of get like this attack of conscience and have to go back and I like that as a little take on the um, the kind of uh, hmm. theme so I, I think it's going to be a kind of getting the gang back together hopefully more seven samurai than friends Christmas reunion um <laughs> 
and doing a big heist. And that, I think that's a, a cool idea as well. If they do it, putting it, centering it around like being a heist film set in a fantasy setting rather than just trying to do a Dungeons and Dragons thing. Yeah, because it's, it's something that I think a lot of people who, again, who aren't maybe aren't into Dungeons and Dragons, that's still a concept they could get behind. Yeah, know, of, gives, of, yeah. Go on, it sorry. gives the plot some strength as well, like rather than just saying we have to try to get these fantasy tropes in, um, mm. which I think is where a lot of the previous fantasy films will fall down. And I'll confirm that after I've got drunk watching them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fantastic. Well, uh, is there anything else? Anyone? Uh, let me try that again. Is there anything else anyone wants to throw in? Uh, about this movie coming up, I know there's not a whole lot to go by. We've only got a couple of trailers. Uh, I am I hope. What we say? We only got a couple of months until until it's due to come out. So I think uh, once obviously it has been done, then we can re we can come back to it afterwards and then give our like thoughts and opinions on it then. Great points, everyone. All right then. I think we're we're all good on that one. <laughs> oh, we're getting Before through these. Uh, yeah, go on. I was going to say the important takeaways are Dungeons and Dragon films are historically bad and you should only watch them drunk. <laughs> we'll see if this one uh, changes that. But uh, moving on to the to the last topic uh, of the podcast, we are going to be discussing min-maxing. Now, our rules lawyer Pete is not with us this evening. However, I found the next best thing. Google. Min-maxing. Oh. Also, min slash maxing or min maxing refers to the activity of making optimal choices when creating or building a player character in Dungeons and Dragons. It is short for minimizing or maximizing, meaning to minimize one's weaknesses and maximize one's strengths. So the whole point that I'm bringing up with uh, this topic is kind of like uh, sort of touched upon uh, what was talked about last week when it came to metagaming. Uh, as in, you know, uh, there's obviously we know there's plenty of examples where it's it's really bad, uh, but then it's also been shown that there's some examples where it's actually it's it's not so bad. And so I want to see can we find the same thing again with mic maxing? Now I think it's quite obvious of like examples of how it could be so bad. You know, someone's obviously cheating and doing everything they can just to make sure everything's just absolutely maximized. But is there any reason why it could be seen as a positive to have this bit happen? I think it depends on like uh what if you're doing it for like role play purposes like you want to play like this over the top like super awesome character and if it's obviously if like your character is going to be like hated by the party then you might run into an issue but i mean i mean if it's okay with the party and that's the kind of character you want to play and it's just like totally epic i think it's i think it's fine me personally i usually don't really do that i like the have characters with like some kind of flaw or you know because it makes it more human and a little more humorous i tend to go a little humorous with my characters mm. uh, but uh as far as like you know is it a bad thing in and of itself personally i don't think so uh but i could see how some people would get annoyed if they're like constantly playing with like superman basically at D&D. &D. Mm. okay yeah fair point uh, Sir Rome? Mm. I mean, in in my eyes, the like, it doesn't seem that bad on this. It's like really min maxing. Uh, let's say someone literally doesn't have any negatives, only positives. And uh, one thing they're trying to go for is maxed out. <laughs> that That's bad. Hmm. But if there's like two, for for example, in D and D you have like, let's say a barbarian wants constitution and strength, and those two are maxed out. But usually, people uh, <laughs> dump their intelligence or wisdom. I mean, I'm okay with that. That makes sense, at least in my eyes, and it makes for a funny uh, role playing action kind of thing hmm. if there's a barbarian that's not that smart but it's but he's really good at like strength checks basically 
<laughs> he can flip flip tables, open doors, knock a house down with his fists. <laughs> but he can't open a book. <laughs> <laughs> Or read anything, is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, fair enough. Uh, what about you, Chad? I, as always, have an opinion. Good, good, good. Um, uh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> uh, so, I used to think min-maxing meant maximising your character's ability to do what it could do, like what Sarone just described, and I agree with that. That's fine. If the barbarian wants to have, you know, the ability to flip a mountain, but isn't able to read or you know learn the rules for noughts and crosses that's actually fine because it's not min maxed it's you're maximizing your potential but you're not minimizing your weaknesses i and i think i think most players don't min max so for example uh the first time i've really maximized a character's potential is um my my cobalt gunslinger that I've put together for your campaign, Crafty. <laughs> uh oh, um, uh oh. <laughs> and originally it wasn't a kobold. Uh, originally it was a goblin, and I'll explain why I changed. Um, and it's to avoid min maxing, basically. Uh, <laughs> so essentially, I rolled some really nice stats, and I decided already decided I want to be this kind of gunslinger character. So I just put that together, and um, now Pete didn't really advise on it so much as cheerlead and encourage me down the dark path of maximizing the the potential of this class and so all the ideas were my own and i cannot blame anybody else for the horrible things that i'm going to do in combat with that character um however i then shot it in the foot by asking crafty a very important re uh, question which was how much time are we going to be spending outside and he said well you're pirates on a ship so an awful lot i went great so being sensitive to daylight might be a bad thing and he went yep absolutely i went cool great so now i'm a kobold <laughs> um which get disadvantage on any checks that they make involving eyesight <laughs> in in daylight um but they also get uh pack tactics so that kind of balances it out in combat so rather than being absolutely terrifying it's just you know occasionally brilliant and that means i can do something with the character even then though even with the great stat block I rolled, had I gone with the normal thing, min-maxing doesn't matter because I just roleplay the character so that, you know, it's not as bad as all that. I'm not trying to start fights all the time to prove that I can do all this damage because it's the only thing my character can do. That's fine. And I think min-maxing is absolutely fine now that I've created a character like this. No, um, I think it's, it's fine anyway. As long as it doesn't warp the campaign. As long as the campaign, the GM doesn't have to plan encounters around that character. So, the other form of min-maxing that I'm familiar with is uh, in the previous edition in, in, well, I say that in third, because I don't talk about the um, forgotten edition uh, of D&D. <laughs> but in third and Pathfinder in 3.5, when you could get your AC up to, like, levels of 25-30 through a combination of things, and that causes problems because then combat encounters are a joke because you just literally can't be hurt and the rest of the party just stands there while you tank and it starts warping those encounters around your character so the GM to make them even slightly engaging has to come up with ways to threaten your character mm -hmm. which there are you know people with that kind of AC usually didn't have a high dex because they built off armor builds etc but it meant that every encounter had to start including something like that or that the enemies had to ignore this frontline tank character, which made no story sense, and go for the characters behind it that are like 30 feet away. You know, and that didn't always make sense, so it's warping the campaign around it. So making an incredibly efficient character is fine, as long as it doesn't demand the campaign changes. That's a uh, yeah, really good way of uh, summing it up. I was going to say, I mean, I, I don't think I've really had too much of a strong opinion either way when it comes to min max and i guess the strongest i did have it sort of just ties along with what you just sort of saying there if it if it's done in such a way that it's going to cause so much more additional work for the dm and you've got a real problem with balancing then yeah i can i could see where there would be a bit of an issue i guess the difference would be then if you allowed all your players then to do it so it, at least then 
you're not worrying about like one player is going to be so much more overpowered than the others. They're all about the same sort of thing. You know, they got different strengths and in different aspects, but like at least then if you're you're making a you want to do something with the monster that they're coming up against. You don't have to worry about that. The fact that okay, it's like this one player is going to be able to hold their own, but those other two are just going to get wiped out in one shot. So yeah, I guess um, I got a lot of it, as it always does, it always seems to be, is the case of like you need to have a discussion with your DM and see what they're going to allow. <laughs> <laughs> how how much work are you willing to put in? <laughs> Well, you'd be you'd be interested to know, Jason. I I put a hell of a lot of work in into my in my prepping, and uh, uh, balancing my uh, my monsters and stuff. Sarone Sarone can tell you, like. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, you know what? I I think we've covered. I think we covered me, Max. It wasn't it wasn't really such a huge topic. It was easy just to sort of throw in there. So uh, yeah, all right. I think we're going to wrap that one up. Guys, thank you very much for that. And before we end uh, this session, uh, we're going to go to our segment that we did last last time, and it is mastering the dungeon. I'm excited. Oh this no, was so, not again! No, this, this was so cool, and I missed out on it. <laughs> oh no! I have eleven questions with a possible twenty points up for grabs. Oh. Yes, uh, I have also. Wait, here for the last one. What's that? <coughs> what do you mean? You haven't watched the last episode? The last you didn't watch the last episode. Oh. No, I no, I watched the last one. I don't I didn't do it, so I don't know how to do the buzzer. Oh, oh right, yeah. okay, okay, no problem. I would um, also need that lesson. Thank you, Jason. Not a problem, guys. <laughs> if you just uh open up your browser, type in buzz in as uh, one word, B U Double Z I N dot live, and then go to uh join game. I'm going to give you the game code, and you'll be able to join into that. Okay. Uh, once you're in, you have to say the code is 132469. 132469. Yeah, okay. I got Chad, we got Sarone, and we got Jason. Uh, hey! Right. I'll tell you what, just to make it a bit more interesting, I'm going to record this screen separately. Just so that people will be, I can add this. I will add this on in the edit, and people will see, you know, be able to see who buzzes in uh, first. Just so that the, no one can see that there is any cheating going on. So I have it currently toggled on lock. Uh, when I do take it off lock, please do not just buzz in straight away. Otherwise, okay. I've got to reset it. Now, when I read out the questions, you can choose to buzz in as early as you like. However, I need an answer from you then straight away. And I must take the first answer that you give. Do we lose points if we get it wrong? You will not lose points. However, you, you will not. <laughs> you, will not have that, so. you will not be able to buzz back in. If then you do know the answer, uh, we have to give it to the next person who buzzes in. If no one then buzzes in, no one will get the point. So basically, uh, let's just say, for instance, I start asking a question and Sarone buzzes him. He answers incorrectly. Then he suddenly realized what the right answer is. Too late. He's done. He cannot now answer that question. If then Chad and Jason either answer incorrectly or don't buzz in because they haven't got an answer. No one wins. <laughs> no one's going to win that question and we'll move on to the next one. So this first one is going to be a bit interesting because there are 10 correct answers. Oh no! Yeah, that doesn't bode well, does it, guys? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so hard. We've given you ten options. <laughs> oh well, wait, wait for a moment, wait for this. So, if you buzz in for this one, I will give you ten seconds to give me as many answers as you can, and you will get a point for Ooh. each correct one. And then I will let the next person buzz in, uh, who buzzed in second. They'll have a go, and then the third person. So, all three of you can have a go. And obviously the first person to buzz in is going to go first and that. And then we'll see how many of you got them correct and how many of you got them wrong. So, okay. number one. There are ten monsters that are legally owned by D&D. &D. One point for each that you can name. Okay, Chad Stick uh, came in first. So, Chad, I should have got a timer. That's my bad. 
It's all right. I can wait. Yep, 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 I think yep, I've yep. got one, but I wanted to get it in. Timer. Right. Uh, I want 10 seconds. Uh, before we begin, do I name until I get it wrong, or can I keep guessing after I've got it wrong once? You can just keep guessing on on this what for this one, as there are so many as there's so many to choose. I'm giving give you ten seconds to name as many monsters as you can that you believe are legally owned by D and D. This one's just quite. Okay. This one's a little bit different from the others. Thank you, Sarone. You will be going third. Right, your time starts now. Beholder, you on T. Drow, uh, Makosa or Sokosa, I forget which it is. And that's time. Oh, wow. That was 10 seconds. It goes very quick. It does. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, we will now go to Jason. Jason, you are going to have 10 seconds to name as many D&D monsters as you can Ooh. that you believe are legally owned by D&D. Your time right. starts now. Beholder, Lich, Mind Flayer, uh, your mom, uh, dead gummit. And you're gonna get minus five points for your cheek. Oh, come on! <laughs> Don't worry, it's all good. I thought you had a PG channel. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, no, he has PG channel, but when he's on someone else's channel, then the dirt, oh, all the dirty all stuff starts coming. Are you saying that your mom isn't PG? Hmm. <laughs> I'll take that. Uh, have you met Crafty? <laughs> 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 right. Sarone, you are going to have 10 seconds to uh, let me know of how uh, as many monsters are uh, legally owned by D&D that you can think of. And your time starts now. Uh, Beholder and Mind Flayer. I don't know what the frog was called. Ah! <laughs> I looked it up because of fucking You look. Oh, right, okay. I was just say you should, you should just go Google it real quick. No. <laughs> I, I remember there being one, but I don't know the name. Right. That's why I bossed in third. <laughs> I will say now that all three of you each got two monsters. Ooh. Each one. You all said Beholder. You all said Beholder. <laughs> that is correct. Jason and Sarone, you said Mind Flare. That is correct. And uh, Chad, you said U and T. That is correct. I'm what was the frog called? I, I can't even look it up. I don't the, know. How I will read. Out, I'll read out what the others are. So, uh, in no particular order, we have Beholder, Gorf, Displacer Beast. I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong. Giffa, Giffa Yankee, and Gif Zirari. Zira, Zira, Zirari. Uh -huh, Zirari. Thank you. I have never heard of that. <laughs> um, Mind Flare, Umber Hulk, Slad, Yuanti, and a Carrion Crawler. Did I, I remember wrong then? I, I, think, I think he missed the Quo Tower. Um, so I looked, so I, I double checked this one, and apparently it's only these 10. Now, unless this is uh, an older list and it's, it's that one has then since been added, we could try okay, to get maybe, a Sorry, my list is 11, you're right. No, maybe it's not the Quo Oh, the Quo Tower might be a newer creation. In which case, uh, uh, I'll get that confirmed. I, I will keep you on two points for now, and if it looks like that was the case, I'll add it in the comments section after the video's gone up, because if that's a deciding factor, then that one point will sway it. Right. Okay. Now I'm going to refresh the oh, toggle. Well, well, hang, hang on a moment. He didn't actually name the race, though. He just said the frog people. That's true. No, it, no, it is fish, I thought. No, it I is. Wait. Bowling walks are the frogs. I think I... I'm going to look up the list. Yeah, look up the list. I, I, I want to find the frogs. I don't remember what they were called. Makoa Toa <laughs> are like our fish people. Jason is right. So I don't I don't think Sarone, as much as I love you, should get the, <laughs> the point for frog people. No, I'm afraid you don't, you don't get a point for frog people. That's, that's I mean, not I, the I, official name. I got a point for Behold and a Mind Flare. Those are the two. Yes, you, new you, you, each, you each have gotten two points so far. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna just write those down just so I keep it's, track. It's, uh, oh god, I'm looking through all of them now. One by one, I'm going to find it. Right. Well, we'll tell you what. We'll we'll spin around and come back to that because people are watching, and you know we're just sitting yep. here like arguing. They the can toss. fast forward. It's recorded. <laughs> <laughs> it's the slud. Right. Important. Slud. Oh, yes, slud. I, I said Every. the slud. Right. Yeah, yeah. Question number two. How many classes are there in Dungeons and Dragons 5e? Uh, uh, 
And with Jason coming in first. I want to say eight. That is incorrect. Uh, Chadstick, you buzzed in next. Uh, quick clarification before my timer starts. Is this in the PHB or is it with extended materials slash unearthed arcana? Uh, I believe it's overall. So within the fi in the fifth edition of Dungeons and Dragons, how many classes are there overall? Including in, I believe, fan made content. No, not fan made content. Stuff by, stuff by Wizards of the Coast. Like, uh, I. Hmm. That's a very good question. Let me hear what you want. Right, well, I'm going to give an answer excluding the Blood Hunter. Okay. Okay. Ten. Uh, that is incorrect. Is incorrect by one? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, Ciron. <laughs> Uh, 13. That is incorrect. The correct answer uh, that I've found online, it was 14. Now I feel I'm like sorry. as the numbers have changed, as so many uh, Chad's follow-up question oh, there sorry. makes me feel like I need to double check now and find out exactly what the classes were called. I thought that would have been a pretty straightforward one, but... I, I feel like I've messed this up fingers. somehow. <laughs> there are 12 basic classes in the PHP. 12 in so the I classes. Wrong anyway. So then the extra two, you had Blood Hunter, then what would have been the 14th then? Artificial. Artificial. That's, oh, that's the one. Yeah. There I we go. That one. All right, there we go. One. So 14 is correct. Whew. All right, okay. Yeah, 14, yeah. Oh, my uh, goodness. That's the one I forgot. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, I was counting on my fingers. I was like... Well, well done for getting past 10. <laughs> and let's wait, Throne, how many fingers do you have? <laughs> I, 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 he has toes too. I uh, true, fine. <laughs> Comment retracting, he's not, he's, he's not a fish person, a slot. Oh, okay. I've, I've played Bloodhunter before, but I've never played Artificer or seen an Artificer, so I didn't even remember that one. What are you talking about? Uh, I wasn't in that campaign where you were playing an Artificer. Oh yeah, fair play. <laughs> right, question number three. How many races are there in the player's handbook? Go for Chad. I have hey. no idea. That is the incorrect answer. Okay. Go for J-Sam. Nine? Nine is the correct answer. Damn! <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to clear those buzzers. Question number four. How many bonus actions can be taken by one player in a round? Go for Chad. One. One is correct. I got back! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Question number five. Which Chris stars in the new D&D movie? Go for Chad. Chad. Damn it, Chad. Oh Chris Pine. That is correct. My hand wasn't even close. <laughs> 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 and I saw, I saw the first pause. I was like, there's no point. In Question <laughs> number six. Can a rogue use sneak attack against undead? Go for Sarone. Yes. That is correct. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have like a 50% chance of getting it right, even if you don't know it. <laughs> I, I didn't see a reason as to why not. You didn't even buzz in, Jason. So. <laughs> <laughs> you in. And like I said, there's a 50% if one of you gets it right, the other one's going to... <laughs> fair, fair. There's no point. It's too shy. Question <laughs> number seven. Dwarfs have resistance against poison damage. If a dwarf get... Oh, flip. Uh, Chad? Uh, advantage. That is not the correct answer, Jason. Seems fair. Carry on. Yes. <laughs> that is not the correct answer. So I'm going to read the rest of the question. No, I'm not. Uh, Sarone. No, no, Sarone's buzzed in. Sarone. Saving throw. That is not the correct answer. <laughs> so I'll just read out what the question was, and you'll see what we're going to. <laughs> Dwarfs have resistance oh, no, against poison damage. If a dwarf gets another poison resist effect, do they stack? The answer oh, Jason, is no. Chance. Jason, you had a 50% chance. Oh. <laughs> the odds were not in my favor. Oh my goodness. Right, that's fantastic. Question number eight. What <laughs> does R-A-W mean? Go for Chad. 
rules as written. That is correct. Okay, question number nine. If there is a creature between yourself and the target you are attacking, the target has what type of cover? Go for Sarone. Out of cover? That is correct. Oh! Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised by that. Oh. <laughs> I, I was like... Mm. <laughs> Question number 10. Can two weapon fight uh, sorry can two weapon bi fighting bonus action slash attack be split up with movement? Go for Jason. I'm gonna go with yes. That is correct. Uh, and yes it is. You can split the movement between uh, the attacks. Should have been faster. But I saw you buzz in, and on the fifty percent rule, I had to go second. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the thing. Is like he's like he worded it out, so it's probably true, and I have a yeah. percent chance. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we have one question left. Has anyone been keeping a tally of what the points are? No. Does anyone want to know what the points are? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> question number eleven. If you were rolling for stats when creating a character, you would roll 4d6 and subtract the lowest roll. What is the highest possible number? Go for Sarone. 18. That is correct. Damn. <laughs> right. My only hope was that it was the highest possible number you could roll, because that's 24. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 50 Right. <laughs> well... <laughs> That should be the name of the episode. <laughs> so, we have a tie for first place. Oh. Jason has four points, and Sarone and Chad both have five points. Oh no! So, oh. we're gonna. I'm gonna come up with a new question. I'm gonna unbuzz. Maybe don't make it a fifty-fifty. Uh, not going to make it a 50-50. Um, I'll tell you what, this one should uh, should work. You both ready? Yeah. Okay. What is the release date of the new Dungeons & Dragons movie? Go for Chad. The 23rd of March, 2023. I don't think that was correct. I could be wrong. You don't even know the answer. Don't correct me when you don't know it. Can I, can I also... It was incorrect. Sarone, oh, for the win. The, 30, the 31st of March. That is correct. And oh, the oh. winner, the master of the dungeon in today's <laughs> session is Sarone with six wait, wait, points. Wait, can, I, can I just point out that when I googled it, it said December 8th, 2000. The one starring <laughs> Jeremy Irons. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it was a Christmas release as well. They were confident. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my goodness! Well, Crafty said, Crafty said it during this entire the, the discussion. He said the date when we were discussing. I did. I did. Yes, oh, I did. Oh. As I remembered. <laughs> oh. Well done. Well done. Congratulations, <laughs> Sarome. He now joins Peter on the uh, the on the leaderboard for Masters of the Dungeon. From last place to first place, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and so that is going to wrap up uh, today's session of Roll for Discussion. I'd like to thank Chad, Sarone, and Jason for taking part. Guys, if you'd like to say your farewells, we'll start with Chad. Goodbye, and remember, Crafty supported the Wizards OGL. We go with this. <laughs> Sarone. Goodbye. All right then. <laughs> and we go with uh, and Jason. You goodbye. You have a fifty percent chance of liking and subscribing. To this <laughs> and if you stack with another fifty percent chance, it's a one hundred percent chance you're going to like and subscribe. <laughs> so watch it with a friend. Problem solved. <laughs> Thank you all very much uh, for tuning in. If you did uh, like what you saw and heard here today, please uh, hit that subscribe button. Consider at least uh, hitting the subscribe button. Um, 
and uh, possibly share it with your friends, uh, at least the ones that you want to stay friends with. Uh, chuck them in. Uh, join us next time when we discuss uh, homebrew mechanics and online versus in person. That and all and a lot more uh, at Roll for Discussion. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good night.